Hey, sorry for the interruption, but we wanted to let you know that this week's episode is brought to you by Spotify for Podcasters. Really cool app. Josiah and I use it for every single show that we bring to you every week. You can edit podcasts right from your phone or computer so you can start creating as soon as you log into the platform. You can easily distribute your podcasts to Spotify and everywhere else the podcasts are heard, just like we do every single week. You can also create video podcasts on Spotify, which is really cool. And of course, you can earn money like I'm doing right now by including ads and even podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free. There's no catch. We really love it. We use it every single week. So we encourage you to go download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. All right, let's get back to the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Print On Demand cast. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to make more money in your print on demand business. Let's get into it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is so good to be back. Hope your Thanksgiving was thankful. I don't know. How do you say that? I hope it was good. Hope you ate too much food. Hope you had a great time with family and friends and took time to practice gratitude in your everyday life. So before we get into the show, into the meat and potatoes, into what we like to call the nitty gritty. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Whatever you're watching this, listening to this on, do us a favor, like, subscribe, share the show, text the show, Facebook, post the show, send it to your ex profile. That joke will never get old to me because it's a ridiculous <laughs> name for a platform, but I'm, but it's, it's here is what we're doing. I'll always call it Twitter. Um, so, or Twix, two for me, none for you. So do us a favor and uh, be sure to do all of that and, and support the show in that way. Uh, it definitely helps us out a lot. And joining me for this show, as with every show, is my co-host, the co-captain, Travis Ross. Travis, how you doing, man? How was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was great. You know, um, my mom was here from out of town, and uh, she was actually, both my daughter and my uh, wife mentioned how much better she seemed this particular holiday because really? um, she's had a lot of, yeah, just a lot of uh, health issues, and sure. she's just had a really hard time the last couple of years, and, and um, she seems to be really kind of just more positive and have, you know, just a better outlook, uh, on life. So that was, that was encouraging, you know? Yeah. She left yesterday morning and, um, we're kind of back to the old grind, but man, it was nice (laughs) to just chill out. And, um, it was, it was fun. My, uh, Arsenal, uh, won on Saturday They're at the top of the table because Man city and Liverpool tied or had a draw. If you are in, you know, if you have the lingo, um, (laughs) And the Chiefs won, uh, so they that was a good it was a good weekend, you know. Even my yeah. fantasy team won. I had the trifecta when nice. Arsenal, the Chiefs, and my fantasy team win. I call that the trifecta. It doesn't it's, happen very yeah, often. It's like an eclipse; like things just line up just per just right, <laughs> and then it it all comes together. Yeah. Um, what, what about you? Did you go back to Wyoming? Yeah, I actually just went to Cheyenne. It's about an hour from where we are now, but my niece, uh, my oldest niece lives there with her husband and her now two kids. So we met my oldest sister and her family up there and cool. uh, yeah, hung out for the weekend and did some bowling. Went to a, There's a really cool brewery up there called Black Tooth Brewery that's really good. And I walked into it and I thought this is the kind of place Travis and I would find if we were traveling through Cheyenne for any reason. But it's really mm. cool. Great beer, food trucks. I mean, good vibe. So, who knows if we ever if you ever find yourself in Cheyenne, Black Tooth Brewery is is a great spot to stop in and have a drink. But uh, yeah, overall, went really well. And uh, like like you, kind of back in the grind. And like it just feels like I was talking to some of my friends yesterday. It was like this felt like a ten day break. It didn't feel like a couple of days for some reason. Mm. Getting back into the sh- to the grind is like how long was this break for Thanksgiving? I have <laughs> no idea what's happening, but um, so yeah, it was all all around a very good, great time. So uh, yeah, let's get into uh, what we have for this show. And as always, we start with the point of interest. Well, howdy, partner. Welcome to the point of interest part of the POD cast. 
So grab your hat and hold on tight because we got some learning to do. Never understand why I made that whip so loud when I made that bumper, but it's uh it's too late. So uh man, this week, okay, so the point of interest selling print on demand on eBay. On eBay. So uh tell us, I feel like you have a story here uh I for do. for this particular point of interest that I'm assuming motivated it to be the point of interest, but you recently opened up an eBay store like that's a thing, yeah. you know, like that's back in the day, it was just the auction site and who right. knew you could just sell POD on eBay. So yeah. What's that like so yeah. far? Well, so like years ago, uh, probably four or five years ago, uh, we tried to do it with an eBay store. Um, and, um, it just didn't seem like it, at the end of the day, it wasn't, there weren't enough listings for it to really take on, um, and really like make the profit that it was worth it to stay on it. So I ended up canceling that store and, you know, haven't really sold on eBay since. Um, but recently now I've been on eBay since 1999. I mean, I'm OG wow. as OG yeah, that's goes. OG. I know. Um, and uh, I've been attending a local eBay seller group, uh, their meetups. And so I've been talking to some eBayers and, that they were letting me know, oh, it's changed a lot and this and that. Yeah. And and there's other, other types of stores that give you like all these listings and, uh, or these abilities to create listings. So I went in and I created, I decided, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. Um, sure. I opened up a premium store and what the premium store gives you is 10,000, 10,000 listing insertions per month. And I was like, well, I only had a thousand last time. If I have yeah. 10,000 and we're going into, you know, the biggest selling season, this will really, yep. th this could actually catch on. So let's give it a shot. Yeah. So, uh, the price for that is 59.99 a month. Um, if you do, if you subs like say, I'm going to do it for a whole year, um, you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it up front for 59.99. Sure. You, you just, if you cancel, you have like a penalty, I guess. Otherwise it's 79.99 a month. Um, if you just, if you don't want to commit to it. Right. But I went ahead and I said, you know what? Um, I think this is going to work. I'm going to do it. And so I jumped in and we immediately started listing. And then craziness started <laughs> to happen. Um, and yeah, I wish I had like a, a, where's the sad trombone? Let's do the sad trombone. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was anticlimactic, but it did like, actually describe my feelings inside uh, when i came up there you go yeah Be because what ebay does is they have on each account a limit on the number of listings you can have on your account and they also limit the number the total dollar amount of the sales you can potentially have so in other words if i have um one product for a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> um, I probably am going to hit my, my listing, you know, I'm not going to hit my listing limit, but I'll probably be over my dollar amount because if yeah. it sells, that's what they say. So even if I have like, uh, you know, a million products for, for $1, that's still a total of a million dollars, which is obviously going to be over my limit. So when I went to this, um, you know, when I went through this, I was like, oh my gosh, I can only list 3,400 products <laughs> in a month. Um, I bought 10,000 worth, you know, 10,000 yeah. listings. When I was I looking just... at the show notes yeah. and you, you inserted the screenshot. I was like, I don't understand. I don't understand because you have yeah. 10,000 and it's selling you've, you've currently. So for those listening, is a screenshot Travis has. It says currently you've listed or sold 3,400 items of your 3,400 monthly limit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How does that make so, sense? That doesn't make yeah, math. it doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all. And so I called them and they were like, oh, yeah, hmm, that's really too bad. You shouldn't have signed up for that. <laughs> I mean, they had no answer for me. I was really frustrated. Um, and they were like, yeah, we can't refund you. I'm like, I'm, I can only list a third of these, the, you know, the listings that you said I could. So give me a third of my money back. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work that way. So of course not. Um, I don't know. It's kind of frustrating. However, I have sold uh, several things in my 3,400. Oh, I also found out that each of your individual units counts towards that. So if you say I have five of a product, that counts towards five listings. 
even though it's only one listing, you so have like five of it. So you mean it, like is that what you're well, talking skew, about? Skew variations also count. But if you if you had a skew if you had one black T-shirt that had six sizes on it, and you said you had ten of each size, that's sixty. So oh. on a mug, you have an eleven ounce and a fifteen ounce, which is what we just did. We just said let's just do mugs. It's gifts, you know, and yeah. that's easy. We have all, we have plenty of those, um, you know, listed on other channels. And so we put in uh, two per, you know, per parent. So two sure. 11s, two 15s, which means that's four right there on that <laughs> one. Um, so, so yeah, um, we ended up only listing probably, I guess, about six, 1,600 because, you know, 1,600 mugs. Because, yeah. um, and that's, uh, yeah, and, and we did them twice, so that it, you know we didn't really get a whole lot of uh, products up there, con you know, compared to the ten thousand that we were hoping. Yeah. But we we have been selling some some eleven ounce and some fifteen ounce mugs, and that's what I wanted to kind of go over. Um, you know, it oh it also gives you the ability to do like a a store wide sale. So I put yeah. a store wide sale up, and um, uh, you know, just trying to use the store features the best I can with the limited number of listings I have. Right. Um, so, oh, the, so the other thing is, I'll, I'll just close out the listings uh, limits first before we move on to the actual sales. Yeah. Um, there is a a link that I'll include in the show notes that you can go to your eBay account, log in, and you can click it, and it'll show you how many what your limits are. So you'll mm. be able to see. So you won't make the same mistake I did, and you can like, uh, uh, you know, every thirty days you're allowed to ask for an increase in right. your limits, and so okay. apparently. Before this screenshot that you see on our show notes, Josiah, was taken, we had just asked for a limit increase. You see that button that says request a limit increase? Yeah. You can only do that every 30 days. And I also found out from the lady that was on the phone, she was, it was on the 20th, I think I talked to her. And she said, don't, at, don't call back again until December 20th, because if you call back on December 15th, they'll restart your 30 days. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So, um, they said, or she said, you they would probably double it, at least double it um, on the 20th. So instead of pushing the button, I'm going to actually call on the 30th and right. say, hey, I want 10,000. You know, yeah. uh, don't don't give me 30 or seven, you know, 6,800. Give me right. 10,000. So, but it, it kind of sucks because it's past the selling, the crazy selling season. But what right. are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yep, yeah, sounds like uh, eBay customer service's response is basically so you get nothing, which is uh, right. That's that's great. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, and it also gives me some great fodder for our next seller meetup. You know, our eBay <laughs> seller meetup. Like, so, hey guys, you told me this, and no, um, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I, like I've I've already sold enough, and we only got going like on the twenty. I think we finally got everything listed on the 20th 21st 22nd something like that last week yeah early last week and um so i just barely made it for black friday and you know the holiday weekend and we've made our money back for this month uh, you know will we continue sure. to make it back i'm hoping as we increase our offerings have more products out there you know every 30 days increasing it or whatever um uh, that eventually it'll it'll be better than it was um when we did it you know a couple years ago and we only had a thousand mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, I, I did, I sold a 15 ounce mug and I, um, have an image that I created for the actual, um, if you're watching online, you can see kind of what this whole deal is. And so, uh, we sold this coffee mug. It's a 15 ounce white coffee mug. It's, it's a funny EMT. It says you, you fall, we haul, <laughs> <laughs> uh, coffee and team. It's a 15 ounce. And then I, I just put a little arrow here. You can see the SKU, and, and we've talked about SKUs. I've got the DID, which is the design ID, and then it's dash L, which means it's the light version. So it goes on light products, which obviously a white coffee mug is light. Yeah. And then it's got the product type, which is the MG15. So you can see all that. Um, we sold it for $19.99 plus $4.99 shipping. Um, eBay charged them. $1.69 in sales tax for a total order of uh, $26.67. And then, of course, they took that sales tax out. And then the selling cost to me was $3.59. That's what eBay took uh, for okay. their share. So my total earnings were 
um, actually 2139. So you can, the cool thing about this is that you can kind of back this all up um, and see what you would make if you were to sell on eBay with a 15 ounce coffee mug at that right. same price. Um, so I just went on Printify and they have a via district photo, which is one of their vendors. They sell the product for five sixty six. Their shipping is nine ninety six, which is crazy um, for a total of fifteen thirty five for that 15 ounce coffee mug, which is a profit of six dollars and four cents and a 24 percent margin. So um, obviously that's just one vendor I went to, um, you know, if you want to get a you want to do better you can get a better find it figure it out and get a better margin my current margin on the 15 ounce is closer to 35 uh, percent yeah. which still isn't great but it's better than what 24 percent it's 10 percent more margin and then on the 11 ounce mugs it's actually uh closer it's over 40 percent. so right. um that those are my margins so but that's because i <laughs> have a different vendor i've done this and that and jumped through these hoops and all of that but the point is you get to control that. And we're actually right. going to be talking about uh, margin as part of the main event. But I just wanted to kind of show some, show you guys what you could do on eBay if you decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and just take a stab at this it, and uh, yeah, and give it a whirl and see what happens. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited to hear, you know, one, what the feedback is from your fodder for the next eBay seller meetup where you tell them all of the uh, <laughs> ridiculousness that you endured on customer service calls. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that grows, especially, you know, to your point, bill busiest selling season of the year or yeah, that's what I meant to say. So it will be interesting to see how that kind of scales and grows and, and see what happens. So um, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, let's move into uh, this week's main event, as we said at the top of the show, we're going to talk about how to make more money in your pen on demand man business, which is, hello, what everyone wants to do. So here we go. Man. This week's main event. Main event. Who's calling? All right. So let's get into it so i mean this kind of segues very nicely from the point of interest because the first part the first thing you need to do in order to make more money in your business is know your margins uh, we talk about this a lot you got to know where you're starting from in order to know where you're going to go you know right. like google maps isn't any good to you if you don't have a starting point um, <laughs> it doesn't tell you how far you have to go to get to that place so it's really important to know and to your point travis and in, in the point of interest you know, you knew your margins were 24%. So how can you go and increase that? And you did to 35. So it's like mm -hmm. knowing your margins is, of course, where you need to start. Yeah. And this obviously is we're taking this or we were taking in the in the point of interest from a um, uh, drop shippers, you know, point of view. If you're doing your own production, it changes everything because all yeah. of a sudden you have different types of overhead and uh, we did a podcast a while back talking about the difference between, um, you know, your cost of goods and like, and what contribution margin is, right. um, you know, and we did a, uh, I can't remember what episode that was, but um, it was back in the 140, 141 range. And that was a, uh, that was a lot of fun, but, you know, we're going to take this one specifically from a drop shippers mentality and like, what can you do if, Hey man, you know, it's not the end of the world if Printify sells it for this price and you feel like, you know, and you're selling it for this price and that's your margin, that's not the end of the world. Right. There are plenty of ways to um, to make more money, you know, and it does. It starts with knowing your current margins. And so how do you do that? Well, you you take what you actually made. So minus the, you know, your price minus the fees, take that price, subtract out how much you you uh, have to pay for that. And that's your, your, your profit, right? And then you divide that profit by the total that you charged for it. So in my case, I charged $24.99 for that coffee mug and I had made $6 or whatever. And when you divide that out, it comes out to about 23, 24%. So that's how you start. And then 
that's how you get your margin on your product. And you should, you should know these margins. You should yeah. go through every product you have and figure out what your margins are for each product. And uh, if you're selling on multiple channels, you should know what your margins are on each channel, because what if you are making a ton more on uh, your margins on Etsy versus Amazon or vice versa? Well, let's right. focus on the place. Let's put more listings up. Let's make more sales. Let's make more effort in the place where we have better margins. That only, I, I mean, I should have been listening to this podcast, <laughs> you know, multiple years ago when I yeah. was in my production facility and I was, and I was focusing on um, selling wholesale to other people who were selling online, right. which was a lower margin for me than just flooding the market with Amazon products right. or Walmart products. Those yeah. were higher margins. And I, I didn't focus on the higher margin task and I paid the price for it. Yeah. So the second thing you would do uh, to make more money is raise your prices. Um, Duh. <laughs> we've talked about this before. Uh, you can do it seasonally. Uh, Tis the season to uh, uh, raise your prices because people are buying gifts. So, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure that you're covering your material in your time. So if you're doing production yourself, obviously this looks drastically different than what mm -hmm. it looks like if you are doing drop shipping to Travis's earlier point. But you obviously want to cover the cost of the mug and <clears throat> pad it a little bit to make sure you're making those margins that you are needing to make per item in order to increase the overall revenue. So and and a lot of times see so you don't have to be afraid to charge what the product is worth, especially if you're looking at newer products or more expensive products, which we'll get into later on. But don't be afraid to charge. Look at what other people are charging and mm -hmm. charge the same. Don't necessarily feel like you have to undercut the price all of the time. Um, but just be confident in the quality of your product and knowing that you can charge that cost and you're going to get it when the person purchases it from you. Yeah. It, um, this is probably the easiest one. You know, how do you make more money? Well, charge more. I mean, that's kind of the first thing everybody goes to. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the market won't bear it, you know, let's just be honest. But a lot of times I think we undervalue what we're selling. And so, um, this might be the, the easiest you know, lesson that you could learn and how to make more money is just raise your prices a little bit. You saw how much I'm charging for a 15 ounce mug. I see people in Facebook groups all the time talking about, oh, I could never charge that much for a mug. No one would ever yeah. buy it. And I'm like, well, I beg to differ. <laughs> yeah. You know, I sell hundreds of them every month, you know, um, if not thousands of them in Q4. So um, you get the idea. It is possible to simply raise your prices. And that could be the end of this podcast. And you can, you know, just yeah, you can go home, pack it in. And, exactly. <laughs> we'll see you later. You yeah. know, go raise your prices, have fun, you know, buy my, buy yourself a new car or something yep. with all your extra money. <laughs> that said, if that's not, if you haven't pressed stop, um, we'll keep we going. Some other, yeah, we do have some <laughs> other thoughts about some other things you can do uh, yeah. to make more money. Yeah, like, for sure. Number three would be find cheaper vendors, production partners, shipping partners, prices to travis's point the vendors you're using uh printify or printful or you know i guess spring is what it's called now but don't be mm -hmm. afraid to to make that switch obviously there's some groundwork you want to do to make sure that you know you know everything that would be involved logistically to that switch so that you're not kind of stuck in the lurch mid transition and then orders are piling up and it's all you know which you know flat files and spreadsheets will help you circumvent a lot of that issue but um don't be afraid to do that because you can find something that is cheaper, same product, same quality, same value, just less money. And even if yeah. it's 10 cents cheaper, every penny yeah. counts. Especially, yeah. I mean, obviously you want to scale this thing. And so uh, 10 cents over a yeah. thousand orders is, you know, a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. right? Did I do my math right? probably um i have no idea i'm gonna say yes i'm gonna say that okay. sounds I exactly do, yeah i think you move the decimal exactly or something correct and know. then yeah divide yeah, yeah divide Got multiply. It. <laughs> um the other thing you know when i say cheaper or when we say cheaper vendors it's not just production partners um it's also you could find better shipping partners um I know people that instead of using UP, uh, USPS are using yeah. UPS or they're using um, mail innovations, which is a slower service, but can really save you money if you have the volume to do that. Right. Um, and then the other thing that you can do 
is just figuring out better packaging, um, you know, for your, if you're doing your own production. So for instance, I actually used to, we used to use, well, I've done a lot of different packaging for our, for our mugs and our 15 ounce mugs were always just over a pound. And if you know anything about shipping, you know, that first class shipping is a lot cheaper than priority shipping. Now they have ground advantage, which is a whole different thing. Um, but back then, if you went over a pound, you had to go to priority or ground, which would be really slow. And so I'd always go to priority and it would be, you know, eight, nine, ten dollars where first class shipping um, was, you know, anywhere from at the time four fifty to six dollars. So you can see it made a lot of difference when we're offering free shipping and we're charging nineteen ninety nine for one, for a eleven ounce and twenty four ninety nine for a fifteen ounce. Uh, that shipping ate up a lot of the fifteen ounce, um, a lot of the profit that the fifteen ounce mugs were making. So what I did was I found uh, an op option to switch to a styrofoam package for all of our mugs, which for one made it easier. We, we didn't have to build boxes and we didn't have to wrap things in, in a bubble. So it sped up our production time and it also lowered the uh, weight of the 15 ounce mugs to just under a pound. And so I could all of a sudden sh send, send them at the same rate that I was sending my 11 ounce mugs and immediately, you know, make an extra three to four dollars every time a 15 ounce mug uh, right. was selling. So, you know, trying different things, figuring out those packaging issues, trying to, you know, figure out your best possible way to save as much money as you can on every part of the product will really, really benefit you in the long run. I mean, I that one um that one particular change, I probably made an extra, you know, I don't know what the math is, several thousand dollars uh, over the course of last year, just because just in shipping savings, you know, so that's significant. That's that does move the needle. Yeah, absolutely. Again, every penny counts. Number four, find products with new or new products with better margins. Uh, we talked about maybe more expensive products, which you kind of get into like home decor, the wood signs, the metal signs, the higher perceived value mm -hmm. of, of products that um, people see online and, and think that it's worth that price tag that's going to be higher than a T-shirt because it's a, you know, printed wooden sign or a sublimated mm -hmm. laminate or whatever that looks like. I know, you know, when you had your production shop, you guys were doing a lot of cool metal signs that were coming out of the sublimated onto aluminum they looked incredible and it's going to have a higher perceived value because it, one it's larger so when people see a larger item they automatically mm -hmm. think that it's worth more money because it's just sheer size would dictate yeah. that that it, that's what it's worth but you can also not necessarily have to even go into a large scale product but you can also focus on fine-tuning the packaging for that mm -hmm. higher perception value the high received value for the customer because packaging makes a world of difference as well yeah i think i've told this story before on the podcast but um several christmases ago uh my wife and my oldest son got me a decanter and four uh whiskey glasses and yeah. it came in this amazing like black leather you know with a uh kind of a, like a monogram thing on the top and you open it up and it's got the thing inside and it's all like lined with silk and they're all sitting in this black, yeah. you know, foam <laughs> and it just looked so expensive. You know, it's like, wow, this is really cool. And, um, several years later, well, not, I guess this last year, Tate and I started looking into my production manager. Also, my son started looking into doing some of this on Etsy. We never got to it, but we were pricing out some of the yeah. Uh, some of the products and the very same products that I got. And I think my wife spent like a hundred bucks or 120, you know, I mean, the actual product cost was like 20, $25. It was all in the packaging that allowed them to sell it for such an increased value, but they right. could have done that. And this is not something that's in our notes um, without really incredible listing photos. So yeah. if you have a product and you've got, you know, just you, that first one has to just be the the product with the white background on Amazon. 
but the rest of them can be so incredibly unique and ornate. And I highly recommend figuring out getting some type of a templatized version of really high quality listing photos because you can charge more. Remember, these people aren't seeing your product in person. They're right. only seeing it online. And yeah. so if you have to obviously Get use all shot. of the SEO, <laughs> you know, all of the wording and all that, but the most important thing, if they click on your listing, they need to see amazing photos. And yeah. that's so important. So that can increase the perceived value before they even click the buy it now button. Uh, right. And what you need to do to command that higher price point for your products. Yeah, absolutely. Next one on the list, start allowing for customization. This is a great way to increase margins uh, on products mm -hmm. because people will pay for it to be customized. You know, we yep. talk about Etsy a lot. Etsy is huge on the, for this. Um, this is something that, you know, when we had what for apparel, we started doing uh, when my wife wanted to do pillows and signs and, you know, have a template people can add in their name or their family's last name. And during this time of year, it was just bananas. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of people who wanted to customize pillows and, and signs. Now, you will need a system. There is more work. It's not just like you offer customization and then it, you just start making more money. <laughs> you have to have a way. <laughs> you have to have a system to facilitate that customization, um, mm -hmm. a system in place. Uh, we talk about having VAs. VAs are really helpful for graphic designers, for people who can kind of take these requests and make them into actual PNG form. But mm -hmm. beyond that, you have to have a way of knowing what product it goes on and where right. it's going to, what size it is, and is it a shirt, is it a sign? So all of that needs to be done. Uh, but you can add five to ten bucks on a twenty dollar product. If you yeah. put in that little extra work at the front end to set up the system to flow easily, you could be making a lot more money on the products. Um, and that that ROI, that return is 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 in your favor because it doesn't take a whole lot of time mm -hmm. to set the system up and then it's there in perpetuity. Yeah, I mean, you just obviously if if I sell a 20, uh, a 15 ounce coffee mug instead of twenty four ninety nine, I'm charging thirty four ninety nine because it's customized. Um, while my fees will be higher, my overall margin will go up because yeah. the amount of profit versus, I mean, it's just so much more. So uh, this is an excellent op opportunity to really make more money is if you can create a system that allows you to have the extra time that it requires to get the order and then you know get the information that you need and if somebody forgets to put the information in you got to go chase them and all of that if you can right. figure out that system um and then attach it to the right order send it to your production facility maybe have it hold for a while um you know all of those things that you just need to do to in order to be able to do custom in a in a managed way yeah you really can increase the amount of money that you're making in a really easy way you know you you know if you're just beginning you're not selling a whole lot you just right. say, okay, at this time, every single day, I'm going to go batch all of them out. I'm just going to go in there. And if I've got one, I've got one. If I've got five, I'm going to do all five right at that time, at the same time, every single day. That could be, you know, your system, just literally making a time every day to do it. But right. um, once you get that system, you really can make a lot more money. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, let us know if you decide you want to start using customization or if you want to, if you start implementing any of these, um, you know, points mm -hmm. or pieces of advice, let us know because we would love yeah. to follow your journey and hear the success you're having. Or if you have any questions, uh, let us know as well. The last one on the list is sell your products on new sales channels, full circle to the point of interest because Travis has an eBay <laughs> store. Uh, but listen, you already have all of these assets in your possession. You've already have this stuff already made. This is kind of what spurred you on Travis to mm -hmm. even start doing print on demand because you had a merch on Amazon or merch by Amazon account um, mm -hmm. or merch on demand now. And you had all these assets and you thought, well, let's just start putting them on mugs. And then you grew for we, everything kind of just went from there. But if you already have the assets, if you already have stuff that you are have created, have paid for, you might as well put them on as many channels as you can because right. then you're putting them to work for you uh, without investing anything extra because they're already there. Maybe you have to change a template. Maybe you have to change some dimensions depending on the product. But for the most part, it's minimal work and you could you know, double your order volume because you're putting it mm -hmm. on 
other channels other than just the one that you started on. Yeah. I mean, if you want to know a secret, uh, all of our products, because we've have a ball in spreadsheets, um, I was able to get all of the information together for, uh, creating the store and finding out, okay, here's, here's the tutorial on how to upload in bulk. I sent that, that URL to that place in eBay to my VA, my virtual yeah. assistant who does all of our listings on Amazon, um, and, uh, and Walmart. And she's a whiz with flat or with spreadsheets. And I said, Hey, take the data that we have. Um, here's the pricing for these products and fill up these slots. And, um, that's exactly what she did. And it took her two days, you know, because we had, and that was because we had to figure out, well, why aren't all these things listing? We, <laughs> you know, all of these errors were coming back because it was beyond that $3,400 or 3,400 listing, uh, creation limit that they had on our account. So once we yeah. figured that out, she was done. Um, and it's all because we had everything organized to where we can expand to another channel. Um, right. It's as simple as selecting this column and copy and pasting it into this column on this other sheet and then back and forth, you know, maybe a couple Excel formulas to get the data that you actually need. Um, and it's really that easy uh, to be up and running on a second channel if you have the organization in place um, to start and you're making more money because all of a sudden you're your products are in multiple places and there's more eyeballs on them. And so there's just inevitably going to be more sales. That's just how it works. Yep. That's awesome. So yeah, like I said, let us know if you are going to implement any of these, if you do implement any of these, do we miss something maybe um, that you, that you know, like, Hey, this is what I did to increase or to make more money. Um, you know, besides, you know, door dashing <laughs> or, or getting a side job, which like listen, recently I did, you know, <clears throat> looking for a side, some side jobs, some side work here, you know, have some plans, got to get a new car, all this other stuff, you know, adulting mm -hmm. garbage that, you know, no one tells you about <laughs> when you're little. Uh, but uh, I recently did get a side job. I actually took a job as the head of old McDonald's farm. So I'm like running the whole thing. You nice. Know, my, my official title is I'm the CIO. And that's this week's dad joke of <laughs> the week. And if you tell it at parties, if you tell it around. That was my fault. I did not mean to hit that again. I meant to go hit the button on another monitor. That's not what happened. So anyway, if you say that joke, if you tell it around the water cooler, mm -hmm. have to sing song the punchline. Because yep. otherwise, what's the point? You know, just you got it. You have to. So, um, Travis, anything well, you else did you wanna, what, what's that? You did it beautifully. I just oh, said you, were, you. you you sang it beautifully. It was, oh, thank it was you. Uh, yeah, just, just warming up. I have a, you know, be singing a lot later this evening. So just uh, getting the pipes ready for, for what awesome. is to come. <laughs> so anything else, Travis, you want to add to this before we kind of put a bow on it and uh, go home? No, I think if you want more then just follow our, uh, you know, tried and true steps here in the uh, main event. And yeah. it's, uh, you're going to make more. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we can't tell you, we're not going to promise an amount, but we'll, it'll be more. Mm -hmm. So That's know good. that. Yeah. So listen, if you want to get in touch with Attention us, hotline fans, what you can do is of course, join the Facebook group, put on a mancast.com slash Facebook. It's the uh, Facebook community that we have. Uh, lots of awesome conversations happening. Ask a question. You don't even have to have, have Travis or I answer the question because there's lots of people in there that have a lot of awesome experience and great advice. So be sure to take advantage of that community as well. Uh, you have to answer the questions or we won't let you in. I have to say that every week because every week there's someone that doesn't. So mm -hmm. they clearly don't listen to the show. <laughs> so um, what we should do is start putting like a secret keyword that we need them to enter. And so, so we know that they're actually listening Ooh. to the show. Um or like maybe that know, would be too difficult. Some pictures. I do, I do feel like like our our Facebook group would have like an extra hundred hundred and fifty people in it if we let in anybody. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. If we just open the floodgates and yeah, I'm just constantly saying, happen. nope, you didn't answer the you didn't answer the question, so you can't come in. 
Yeah, so just answer the questions. That's all you got to do. So again, printonamancast.com slash Facebook, and then in, printonamancast.com slash Instagram and slash YouTube is where you can go to find these nope. episodes. No questions. No questions. No questions on those. Yeah, you just follow. Just push a simple button. Uh, but if you want to watch these on video form and you don't like Spotify for whatever reason, you can see them on YouTube as well. However, it's a little easier to listen and watch. Well, listen on the go with Spotify. Don't watch on the go. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Uh, if you want to support the show, uh, you put on a mancast.com slash shop is how, another way you can support the show monetarily. We'll get you a t-shirt. Um, and that's another way. All the money that we get just goes reinvested back into the show, into product, uh, into production quality, into equipment, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's where uh, you know your money will go. And then you can also go to print on with no backslash or anything just to join the newsletter where you'll get tips and tricks and uh, some point of interest, maybe even before they hit the show, as well as an additional dad joke each and every month, which is why we know you listen is for the dad joke. So as I said at the top of the show, wherever you're listening to this, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, Google, anything that allows you to rate and sub- rate and um, and subscribe, please do that. It definitely helps us uh, conquer the mysterious algorithm that we always talk about. We just want to get our information in front of the people that need it the most. And so when you do that, when you share the show, text it, Facebook it, leave a review, it helps us do that. So um, Travis, one last time to you. Anything else before we go? I don't think so. Go make more money. All right. You heard him, folks. Go make more money. And we'll see you next time. So for Josiah, for Travis, good God, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> I've been talking far too much over the last couple of days, apparently. True international average of pressure. Okay. So for Travis, I'm Josiah. We'll see you next time right here on the Print on Demand cast. See ya. Hey, babe. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print on Demand cast. We hope you enjoyed the totally tubular show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure.